Hi, I'm Dennis Phillips, and welcome to Everyday Reloading and Shooting. All right, welcome back to the Georgia Gun Club. I'm continuing on with my load development of the CFE 223 powder and the 73 to 77 grain bullets. Today, I'm shooting that powder with charge weights from 22 and a half grains to 24 and a half grains, and I'm shooting a 75 Burger VLD target bullet. This is a long bullet, and it has to be loaded at 2.36 inches. So I've got six targets here. The first one will be five warming shots and on that one I'll be using a 73 ELD match bullet to get the rifle sighted in and adjusted and then I'll be shooting five 10 shot groups from 22 and a half to 24 and a half grams. As always you're welcome to enjoy the music while I fast forward through my shooting or you can skip forward to the results that follow. Shooting at 100 yards. Well, crap, I think I actually shot those last two at the wrong target. But let's bring them in and take a look. Well, that's disappointing. I had this group right here with one flyer here. And then I had this group going right here, and I believe these two shots right here were actually intended for this group over here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and that would be nine and ten. So that's pretty disappointing that I did that. So I'm going to have to take that into consideration when I measure these. Got a pretty tight cluster right here with the flyer on either side. But it looks like as that charge weight was increasing, this was the best load at 23 grains with a 73 grain ELD match. But it looks like this bullet, the 75 VLD target by Berger, it looks like it prefers the heavier charge weights. So anyway, we will take these home and measure these with the Hornady Ballistics app using the group analysis function, and we will see how they compare. So stay tuned. All right, here are my results from the range today. We're continuing our load development with the CFE 223 powder and bullet weights from 73 to 77 grains. Today, I'm shooting a 75 grain Burger VLD target bullet, and we're shooting charge weights with this powder from 22 and a half grains to 24 and a half grains. And on each of these, I will show you a close up of the target. And I will also show you a screenshot from the Hornady Ballistics app using the group analysis function. So just a quick word, 
to give you an idea of how I'm marking my targets here, I use the Hornady Ballistics app and the group analysis function in which you take a photograph of the group next to some unit of measure, in my case, a ruler. And you establish the caliber, the distance that you're shooting from, the measurement points on the ruler, and then you mark your impacts using that app. And then the app does the calculations for you. It shows your average point of impact, your group size, your mean radius, your height and your width of the group, and the elevation and windage. Here's a screenshot of this first group that I measured using the Hornady Ballistics app. And I'll put it next to the group here. And you can see in this case, this red cross represents your average point of impact. So what that app does, is it measures all of these shots and then it establishes an average point of impact for all of the shots. And then it measures the distance from there to each one of these impacts and it averages those and that gives you a mean radius. In this case, we had a group size and I've marked that with a blue line with a little tang here at each extreme end. And this is 1.40 inches. And this has a mean radius of 0.39. The red cross again is that average point of impact. And this is your windage, which is a minus 0.69 inches because it's to the left. And your elevation is 0.86 inches. And then you see pencil lines here where I've marked the area. So in this case, the app has determined that the group is 1.11 inches tall and 0.86 inches wide. And so you multiply those two numbers and that gives you an area. So in this case, this is 0.95 inches. And so that's what I'm using for each one of these groups. I first shot a fouling group using a 73 grain ELD match bullet. It was shooting somewhat to the right. My first shot was kind of close and I want this to be adjusted high so that I don't destroy my point of aim with the impacts. So after shooting these five shots, I adjusted the scope one click up and two clicks to the left. Well, I probably shouldn't have done that because all of these groups were then shooting to the left. Nevertheless, uh, you just saw this group at 22 and a half grains. The average point of impact is 69 hundredths to the left and 86 hundredths of an inch high. And that's about where I wanted it. We had a 1.40 extreme spread and a mean radius of 0.39. And a radius is half of a circle. So if you double that, that becomes a 0.78 inch average group size. You see the pencil lines here. The group has a height of 1.11 inches and a width of 0.86. So that gives us an area of 0.95. So the area that that group is covering is just under an inch. Moving on to 23 grains, we're tightening up a little bit. We've got an extreme spread of 1.19 inches. We're shooting 0.86 inches to the left and 0.98 inches high. So we're increasing that charge weight and the bullet shooting just a little bit higher. We have a mean radius of 0.43, which if you double that, that gives you an average group size of 0.86. We have a width of 104 and a height of 0.92. That gives us an area of 0.96, still under an inch. At 23 and a half grains of powder, now we're starting to tighten up quite a bit. Last week I was shooting a 73 grain ELD match bullet and we found the best charge weight for it at 23 grains. Well, this is a slightly heavier bullet and a longer bullet and it seems to like the heavier charge weights a little better. So at 23 and a half grains, we now have an extreme spread of 0.98 inches, and that is driven primarily by these two flyers on either side. Otherwise, if you look here, we've got eight out of 10 shots clustered together in one ragged hole. We're shooting 0.83 to the left and 0.9 inches high. We have a mean radius of 0.23, which gives you an average group size of 0.46. So we're really starting to tighten up here. And that's also confirmed by the area, which is 0.96 wide and 0.47 tall. 
And so that gives you an area of 0.45 inches, which correlates pretty well to the average group size of 0.46 inches. So really pleased with that. Might have to do a little bit more experimenting with these last three charge weights here. But we go on to 24 grains, and you see these two impacts. This was a momentary lapse of reason, I guess you would call it. I had finished shooting this group, and then I started shooting over here at 24 and a half group. And for some reason, I have no idea, I put eight shots over here. And then on the last two shots, I went back to this target over here and shot again. Oddly, though, they were shooting to the right versus these shooting to the left. There was one that shot to the right here. But anyway, these two impacts that I've circled here actually belong to the fifth target. So just forget about those. That was just a dumb mistake on my end. So looking at the group that I shot at 24 grains, we've got one ragged hole right here with nine shots through one ragged hole, and then we have one flyer off to the side. So we have an extreme spread of 0.59 inches. So I think that's pretty good for 10 shots. Uh, and we have a mean radius of 0.17, so that gives you an average group size of 0.34. We're shooting 69 hundredths to the left and 1.04 inches high. So as we're increasing that charge weight, that rifle is shooting a little bit higher. We have a width of 0.45 inches and a height of 0.56. So that gives us an area of 0.25 inches. When we get to 24 and a half grains, now we're only measuring eight shots because two of those were accidentally shot on target number four. But when you look at 24 and a half grains, this shot pretty well also. Now we do have an extreme spread of 1.52 because we have a flyer over here off to the right. Um, but we have a mean radius even with that of 0.37, which gives you an average group size of 0.74. We've got a width and a height of 1.42 and 0.63, which gives you an area of 0.89 inches even with that flyer. Uh, we're shooting 1.21 inches high, so again shooting a little bit higher because of the increased charge weight and shooting a little bit more to the right now but we're still 0.24 inches to the left. Now, I analyzed this taking that flyer out. If you take that flyer out and you've got seven out of eight shots here, you've got an extreme spread of 0.86. You've got a mean radius of 0.24, which gives you an average group size of 0.48, and you have an area of 0.39 inches. So I may do a little bit more development around these three charge weights, 23 and a half, 24, 24 and a half, and we might even experiment some with the seating depth on these. This is a longer bullet. This is seated at 2.36 inches overall length. Your standard 223 round is 2.26 inches, but these are 2.36 because it's a longer bullet, so it has to be loaded longer and I happen to have a rifle and a magazine that will accommodate that. All right, so really happy here with uh, some of these groups, especially here at 24 grains of powder. So I'm going to say that's the winner for today. We've got a mean radius of 0.17 with a group size average of 0.34 inches and an area of a quarter inch. So very pleased with that. So uh, if you're going to be loading the Burger VLD target bullet, and the CFE 223 powder, I suggest you look at that charge weight of 24 grains of powder. All right, I hope you find this information helpful. If you have any thoughts, ideas, suggestions, or comments, please leave those below. I hope you will like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.